let's get to our closing discussion segment. Normally, we like to close out on something whimsical. We've got something that's kind of light and fun, but there is some serious discussion to go with it. So are people okay to roll with, like, this is fun, but a little bit serious? Yeah. All right. The word of the year uh, has been announced. Pop quiz, anyone remember what last year's word of the year was? No. What was it? It was Riz, which means if you can't remember that, neither of you've got it. <laughs> but anyway, Oxford's 2024 word of the year uh, is brain rot, which is, yes, technically two words, but whatever. They're Oxford. They can do whatever the heck they want. Brain rot is, quote, marked by a supposed deterioration of a person's mental or intellectual state, especially viewed as a result of overconsumption of material, now particularly online content, considered to be trivial or unchallenging. Basically, what we're talking about here is slop. That's the technical word for it, slop. The kinds of memeified, AI-generated, or magified crap that appears all the time in your feed, especially if you continue to be on X. And those of you that I'm speaking to right now who continue to be on X, what are you doing listening to this podcast? I thought all the Dems had fled for Blue Sky. I haven't, but I don't. Anyway, that is the word of the year. Brain rot. Paul, you've been exhibiting signs of brain rot through that this entire episode. What do you make of this? I suffer from brain rot. Uh, I, I admit it. Brain rot is real. Brain rot is dangerous. I guess we need to forgive Pete Hegseth all his excesses and trespasses, for he suffers clearly from brain rot. Quick question. If your brain has been partially eaten by a worm, as true story, RFK Jr.'s <laughs> has, does that by definition mean that you're suffering from brain rot? No, that's different. That's brain worm. And brain worm. RFK seems to have suffered from brain worm and his suffering and the results are clear. Do you remember yeah, that's the... more like brain devoured as brain opposed devoured. to brain rot? So the problem with brain rot is we all do it voluntarily to ourselves. Like, have you guys seen like on Facebook? You know the you know am I the A H from Reddit? It's now been transferred onto Facebook in these little tiny videos, and it tells a story, and they're all mindless. It's my sister borrowed my car and got a flat tire. Am I the A H for telling her she can't borrow my car again? And thousands upon thousands of us weigh in and give them advice and we know it's ai there's hundreds of these a day on facebook and i click on them and i listen to them and i read them and i say to myself this is ai why am i doing this and so i put the phone down and then i pick it back up because i want to see what some other drama in some non-existent relationship is on facebook literally this morning <laughs> my 13 uh, year old daughter turned to me and said dad Guess what I'm watching on my phone? It's, there's nothing. There's no sentence that any father wants to hear more than that one. <laughs> she says, I am watching a show where there's six models, but one of them is an imposter, and the other models have to figure out who it is. And I said, oh my gosh, this literally is a case we're going to talk on the show today about brain rot. This sounds like brain <laughs> rot content. Also, will you send me the link? Because that sounds fascinating. And I definitely want to watch it. <laughs> it's so terrible. I mean, this is the problem. For years now, notwithstanding the fact that, thank you, listeners and viewers, we've had 35% growth this year on the show. I feel like this show is trying to be a Michelin one-star restaurant. Not, not two stars, not three stars. Just, we're on the list. We're trying to be... Keep it classy, San Diego. We're trying to be intelligent, fun, nuanced, and we're operating next to McDonald's poorer cousin. It's like from coming to America. We, we are next to a bunch of McDowell's and people are going in and eating the slop and, you know, like they're Joe Roganing. And here we are trying to operate in that environment. And it's really, I mean, Alicia, you are also a columnist like me and there is so much gray goo out there, and it's so hard for people to tell the difference between your thoughtful pieces written on the basis of your long career in politics and media and your insights and your wit with the pen and the gray goo out there. 
what this is this is bad right there's a lot of great goo and, and let's not forget elon musk announced on twitter or what x whatever long ago it, w- about his platform that we're all journalists now and i remember that being said and echoed and repeated and i'm like just popping up your thought of the moment is not journalism I think Kamala Harris is a criminal. That's not journalism. I mean, and so the fact that everyone has a say and has a platform to put it out there doesn't mean it's true, real, or factual. And that's the problem we're in right now. I I think it is a problem. And we've talked so much on this show about perceptions, reality. We've talked about Democrats' problem. How do you deal with the number one issue in the campaign, which is the perception that the economy writ large is bad and we all recognize on this show that it's an impossible catch-22 and it has been all year for democrats all throughout 2024 because it is very true that inflation has been extremely painful for most americans and they're well within their rights to feel like the economy is bad and at the same time it is also very much true that there are aspects we measure in the economy that are important that are very important, like our overall wealth as a nation, our GDP, and uh, how many jobs we all have that are also important figures. And by those measures, the economy has been doing well. And we can't even have a a conversation about it. We can't have a nuanced discussion about it because there's so much slop out there. There's so much gray goo and a nuanced conversation gets lost. Anyway, in an effort to close on an elevated note, I would like to do as the uh, Oxford University Press did on their website in awarding brain rot the word of the year. They said, and here we go, this is the elevated portion of the show where we sound like effete liberal coastal people. Um, Which we are. Well, especially Alicia. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. Enjoy your extended <laughs> oh. stay in my basement. All right, here it is. This is the quote. The first recorded use of brain rot was found in, anyone? podcast called Beyond Politics. 1854, (laughs) in Henry David Thoreau's book, Walden, which reports his experiences of living a simple lifestyle in the natural world. As part of his conclusions, Thoreau criticizes society's tendency to devalue complex ideas or those that can be interpreted in multiple ways in favor of simple ones, and sees this as indicative of a general decline in mental and intellectual effort. Quoting here from Thoreau, while England endeavors to cure the potato rot, will not any endeavor to cure the brain rot, which prevails so much more widely and fatally. And, and it's been that, going ever since. On a, it, downward, a downhill slide for all of us. If the shoe fits. Exacerbated, exacerbated <laughs> by the invention of the interwebs. Facts. All right. On that elevated, sublime note, for Paul and Alicia, Matt. We'll see you next time.